Hello, and welcome to the second podcast for Unexplained Possibilities. I am your host, Rose, the Alien Queen, and with me tonight I have my twin flame, Melvin, the Crimson Taurus. Hello. Tonight's topic, we will be covering the different types of spirits that haunt our dreams. So turn down the lights, sit back, and enjoy the show. All right. So, spirits. Spirits are interesting because it's a term that covers a lot of things. I mean, it could be uh, human spirits, demonic spirits, nature spirits, a lot of stuff. Uh, Rose, what's your thoughts on spirits? Well, I definitely believe that there is such a thing as spirits, um, just due to experiencing some sort of spirits before I have. Um, not so much other people though. Um, I believe there's definitely a big difference between a demonic spirit and just a normal spirit. Um, so, so I believe when people pass over, um, sometimes they can be stuck here if they have unfinished business with the living. Um, so they tend to sort of roam around, uh, maybe even haunt houses or people um, or even items. Spirits can actually attach themselves to um, physical items that they might have had in their past life that they just feel drawn to and they don't really want to detach themselves from it. So. Um, I think the major difference with demonic spirits is they are very, very aggressive um, to the point where they can scratch people. Um, so when you say scratch people, you mean a actual physical yeah. scratch on a yeah. on a on a you know on a physical being. And so a spiritual being has the ability or at least a demonic spiritual being has the ability to actually scratch someone if they want to. If the spirit has enough energy, I'm pretty sure that they are capable of physical harm. Um, they can move things around, they can slam doors. Um, yeah, if they have enough energy, I think it's all got to do, it all comes down to energy, how much energy they have. So a demonic spirit, they feed off your negativity. So if, if they find a very uh, vulnerable person that's really negative or depressed or upset, they feed off of that. They love negative energy, whether it be anger, hate, um, anything that's, you know, that will just draw themselves to a person and feed off of that person. So, um, but with the demonic spirits is they actually have to be uh, I believe they have to have some sort of access to our, our spiritual realm um, so I actually think demonic spirits could possibly be from another dimension they may not be earthbound spirits um, they could basically use some sort of portal access to come into our spiritual realm so that they can physically harm us Okay, so what you're saying is uh, demonic spirits are their own thing. They're not... Yeah. They, I they, don't believe they're a human-type spirit. I believe they are from a completely different place. And, you know, that's something I believe as well. I, I don't believe uh, demons are human spirits. I believe there's a major difference because there's stories of demons, one in particular, which we'll go into later on tonight, but there are stories of demons that have been around for thousands of years. Some had to, you had to sacrifice certain things to them, you know, blood sacrifice, uh, kids, or give them toys, whatever, to just appease them or else they'll just go on a rampage and just make everyone miserable, which, you know, would, I, I suppose, would give them more energy to make people even more miserable very interesting cycle <laughs> um, and they also need to get permission off of that person for them to actually uh, attach themselves to that person um, including possession uh, what, what do you so, mean can, can you be a little bit more specific well, I'm going to use the Annabelle doll as a uh, example 
So everyone should know about the Annabelle di- doll at the moment because they've done the movie about it. Uh, the uh, Conjuring, is that the movie? Mm, well, The Conjuring was sort of linked to Annabelle, but that was a different story. Okay. Uh, so, okay, I just want to clear things up for people that don't actually know, but the, the first Annabelle movie that they've put out is 100% not accurate information. So what happened with the Annabelle doll, um, which I believe they're going to do in the second Annabelle movie, is um, a mother buys this doll from an op shop and gives it to her daughter, who has a roommate, I believe. So it's two two girls and I think possibly a guy that's living in like a um, an apartment because they go to university or something. Um, so that's actually where the story took off in real life. So because they didn't actually have a background of how the doll got possessed in the first place, they did the very first Annabelle movie to just give it a storyline. So that first Annabelle movie was false. There's really no truth to that movie at all. Okay. So just so that everyone is aware, you know, because m- most people probably don't realize. So just so that people, you know, get get that Annabelle, there is a truth to it, but not that first movie. That first movie was false. Um, so no, no one actually knows how Annabelle got possessed in real life. Um, so using that as an example... That spirit, or sorry, I reckon, I, I believe it's a demonic entity. That, yeah, demonic entity has attached itself to Annabelle, the doll, and um, someone's obviously gotten rid of it and put it in an op shop, and then it's gone to this person's house, um, and, and it actually pretended it was a little girl spirit. It, it lied, and basically. And the only reason why they know that is because they had a medium or something come to the house, and they and she thought it was a um, a little girl spirit. So they've actually naturally welcomed the spirit into the house and basically told the spirit it could do what it wanted. So that's given the demonic spirit access to do whatever he wanted to do. Um, but for a demonic spirit to attach itself to a person, they need permission. So by offering yourself you know, going, oh, yeah, you're welcome to do this to me. That's you giving the demonic spirit permission to possess you and to control you. Um, So with the Annabelle doll, it was a physical object that was um, haunted, so to say. Um, But what that demonic spirit wanted, though, was a person, not a doll. It basically used that doll to get into someone's life and to control that person because they just want to feed off your energy. Um, okay, so if a demon needs permission to attach themselves to you or whatever, um, I mean, you and I, or anyone for the, almost anyone for that matter, I mean, would you really say to some invisible man or woman or creature? It, it's like, not so much saying, yeah, you can control me, it's more so that. If people aren't aware of how to deal with a demonic spirit, um, they're putting themselves in danger of letting this demonic spirit into their life and letting this spirit attach themselves to them because they don't know any better. Because that spirit feeds off your energy. And if your energy is really negative and if you're the one going about deliberately trying to attract a, a spirit, not knowing what it is, you're basically putting yourself in a position where you could be in danger. Okay. Um, the other thing, like you said earlier, too, is they do attach themselves to physical objects. So, And it's not just limited to a doll. It, they can attach themselves to a house. There are quite a few uh, cases of hauntings, uh, um, demonic activity being att- linked to houses and stuff. One of them, uh, which they made a couple of movies about, is... Um, Oh, I'm having a mind fart. You know this movie. Ryan Reynolds was in the uh, remake. Yeah. Oh, this is kind of I, me. I was the Amityville Horror. Yeah, the Amityville Horror. Yeah. yeah. And that was, it was either a demonic spirit or a very, very angry human spirit, which um, human spirits, you know, I, I don't believe humans can turn into demons or anything like that, but... I do believe that there are human spirits who are just 
mad and upset and they just want to hurt someone and just be a jerk and you know so there's a difference between a, a bad malicious human spirit and a demon spirit that's just naturally the way he is you know yeah this that's why I wanted to try and break down the difference between the two um, I mean sometimes it could be a bit difficult in knowing the difference yeah. um, but I believe if, if your spirit is just angry that there's a way of calming them down and hopefully getting that spirit to, to move on you know but then there are some people who are just evil you know for lack of a better word they're just messed up folks and they like hurting others you know and some some humans they they're like that in the physical world and they stay like that in the spiritual world they're just they're just they're just messed up whereas opposed to a demon spirit you know i know i'm going to sound a little foo-foo here but i try to look at them as doing something that is just in their nature that's what they do that's how they are they're they're nasty by their nature that's what they know you know like a dog a dog knows it's a dog it's gonna bark it's gonna chase things when it catches their attention as opposed to you know a human we want to yell and scream when someone makes us mad we want to uh, chase the ice cream truck every now and then and we do depending but overall though we know it's it looks um it looks funny when you do it and you look ignorant it's like yeah let me just keep it in and calm down whereas opposed to a dog they don't care they're doing what's in their nature so i i feel that demons they just do what's in their nature they, they especially if it gives them energy that they like chaos as opposed to a bad spirit it's not in uh, a, a person's nature to just be evil or anything like that you're taught that and if you like it enough you just keep on at it but you're not you're not born that way I, I don't believe anyone is actually born evil you have to be taught to be evil and messed up Rose where'd you go are you with me still I yeah I'm with you oh. I definitely do agree with that and uh okay so then there are other types of spirits as i was saying the nature spirits these guys are interesting because they're they're more how can i put it they're alive but they're not alive they're more or less energy from the natural world and it comes together to create uh an energy being which you know for lack of a better word is a nature spirit I'm not necessarily talking about fairies or anything like that that's something for a whole another day but what I am saying is that there quite possibly could be um, the spirits that are just created from nature due to the amount of energy that's released and they get a small amount of consciousness and they're here and they do whatever it is they're supposed to do for instance in the forest a, a forest spirit would you know help things grow or um, keep things green it's things of that nature a water spirit will keep water flowing it'll be around water a fire spirit watch it burn baby burn you know <laughs> So are these spirits more like energy, like just balls of light or energy? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, I, I believe they would be born from energy, but they're not necessarily like just like a powerhouse of energy. But then saying that, you know, all things are made up of some type of energy. That's confusing. <laughs> um, how can well, I, I get what you're trying to say. Um... Because in one of the books I was reading about, like the ET subject, um, they were saying something about um, energy is what makes every every living thing on this planet. So energy and I think vibrations and that that's what makes a rock a rock. So that energy made the rock a rock and not a piece of grass. You know, um, they're basically in, in, in like the energies 
helping the planet, um, with creating, I guess, every living organism. Like everything's a living organism. A, a rock is a living organism. A, you know, a plant is like like everything that we have on this planet is living. Um, and yeah, and the energy and the vibrations and the, you know that that's what creates um, what you see and what you feel, what you touch. Okay, uh, going back to the demons real quick because that a demon that's usually a term that uh, it's used to describe non-human spirits, not necessarily um, not necessarily just these evil. Spirits spiritual creatures or anything like that but for instance a succubus would be considered a demon even though it's a succubus I I admittedly I don't know very much about succubus or incubus or succubi and incubi as they say because I believe that's the plural word and what I do know is they're very possessive and I mean, they're they're like these sex spirits. I mean, you want to—they they could be very demonic and from another realm, but it's possible they could be um, human spirits that have passed over that are just extremely sexual. I mean, that's possible. So, you know, but we use the term demon for them, and uh, you know, is it a correct term because demon has so many negatives associated with it? Donald Trump. <laughs> Demon. <laughs> oh, I don't know. He looks more like a reptilian to me now. <laughs> Zing. No, that, that would be an offense to them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but, you know, so, and then um, if we go into certain uh, religious beliefs, just about anything that is not uh, considered like Christian. Uh, if it's not in the Christian belief, such as uh, angels or God, anything that's not that, oh no, they're demons. Can't deal with them. Nope. You know. That's actually one thing that I don't like about the ET subject is a lot of religious people curse them out and say that they're demonic, which is completely not true. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I I really don't like it when people say that something's demonic when they don't know anything about it. Unless you know what you're talking about, it just don't. Yeah, there's a bit of a difference. Um, so, and we will have the religious talk eventually. That that's going to be interesting. We, yeah, we we want to have a talk about that, but at the same time, we don't really want to offend anyone with their what they believe in. So it's going to be a uh, a touchy subject, I think. Oh, it's always touchy. Religion, politics, and women. It'll never go right. Women, eh? Ooh. Oh yeah, what, I went there. What about what about black people, Melvin? What about black people? We're oh, awesome. I'm just, <laughs> which is, I'm just throwing another topic in. <laughs> God, you're a mess starter. That's what you are. Totally. Uh, anyway, back, back to what we were talking about. Yeah. So, just so many different types of spirits. Okay, but we're gonna try and keep focus on just human spirits and demonic spirits for the most part and just keep it focused on that and possibly talk a little bit about if there is afterlife or not or who knows maybe when we die we're just bleh, and that's it no i don't think that that's yeah that's the case i have a theory of what happens when we die but again it's a touchy subject for people that don't believe it yeah well, hey, you know what they say, man. no one's going to believe everything, and if someone did believe everything that someone said, then I have a bridge I want to sell. They're thinking for themselves, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, human spirits. Human spirits are very interesting because I personally believe, as you know, from the conversation so far, that... There is life after death, and I do believe there are spirits wandering around, whether they're here voluntarily, they have unfinished business, they're here to guide you. I don't know, but I do believe they are here. And some of them, they do attach themselves to different things, some things that they love, again, like houses, 
or even dolls. And Rose, you actually have spirit dolls, correct? Yeah, I have four of them, actually. Yeah, um, would it be okay if we post some pictures of those up on... Uh... Yeah, I can definitely do that. I have no issues. I even have some pictures of orbs. Um, like, that's another subject again. Uh, orbs are like energy balls. It's not necessarily definitely spiritual related, but they're definitely like balls of energy. So, um, yeah, I can definitely post some pictures up. Okay, uh, and to see those pictures, go to... What is it? www.facebook slash unexplained possibilities. <laughs> there we go. Yes, I remembered. Um, but yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Um, there's actually uh, there's more people out. There's other people out there that can actually uh, talk to spirits a lot better than what I can. Um, I actually feel like I've lost my gift. Um, when I was a child, I didn't really have any issues trying to communicate with spirits um, but I, I feel like I've lost that and I'm actually at a point where I I can't really talk to them which is well I can talk to them openly like this that's fine they can hear you but I, I can't get anything back from them so it's a little disappointing well it's funny uh, that you but, say that because uh, for whatever reason a lot of times as little kids I don't know if we're just more open with the universe or what but little kids they do speak to things that aren't there but yeah, they're, they're they swear to god is someone there and they're speaking yeah, to them like grandpa the case. i can explain that a little bit um, more if you want um so when children are born they have a big a big wide imagination they're definitely more open to the universe um so they basically have opened themselves up to anything and everything so that's why as a child you can see things that other people can't, um, you know. So they can see a person or a child spirit, um, and that that's, can be their invisible friend. A lot of people have invisible friends when they're children, and in my, most cases are because they can see spirits. So as that child grows older and they get taught there's no such thing as ghosts and there's no such thing as this and there's no such thing as that, you know, they sort of lose that um, that that open that openness, and they start shutting themselves off to anything paranormal. So I, I believe that that's what causes us to grow out of what we what we see as children. So it's one of those things where if you say it enough, it must be true. I guess um, I never really had that as a child. I, I think um, a lot of people are a lot more gifted than others. So there are people out there that can open themselves up more to the spiritual realm that's why you got people like mediums and psychics and all that is because the ones that aren't fakes the ones that are real legit people um they actually have um opened themselves up um so that they're a little bit more gifted than others um like everyone actually has the potential of doing so it's just a matter of opening yourself up um which i've tried and i've failed so I'm not 100% sure how to do that properly. Uh, so, I mean, I'm a pretty open person. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm all out there. But uh, <laughs> I, seem, I'm, I seem to struggle getting uh, spirits to talk back to me. Um, it's not that they I, don't talk back. You just can't hear them. Not yeah, yet, anyway. so, yeah the, the, it's definitely some people are easier at doing it than others. Put um, it that well, way. Speaking of mediums and psychics and that stuff you really do want to be careful with who you go to and what they're saying listen very very carefully to their words a lot of times they do what's called cold reading where they'll say a bunch of stuff very in a very general sense and yeah. they'll use that and form a pattern and kind of trick you and do a little mind game on you and get all your information and such and then you have some that you know as soon as you walk in they just size you up they they can read you they look at your shoes they look at your watch what you're wearing and they can determine your personality just from that little bit of info and they go from there and you know what that reminds me of melvin um there's actually a south park episode for anyone who likes that show um where i believe it was stan who was um 
trying to show people how um, one of the famous guys in America, I don't know his name, I'm sorry, I don't watch those shows. Uh, I think John Edwards. Yeah, that's him. They were taking the piss out of him, and it was so funny because it was so true. Um, the way that Stan was saying, you know, this is how they um, manipulate you to believe that what they're telling is the truth. So, funny episode. Worth the watch for anyone who loves South Park. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I just had to say that it just reminded me of that episode. It was hilarious. So, and the other thing too with uh, people who are real mediums or psychics or whatever, chances are they won't charge you. Like they they wouldn't. Who charges to to help you connect with someone who's passed on or anything like that? I mean. You there should, might be some people out there that do want a little bit of money for well, the yes, time I mean, but, that they're taking to do it. But if they're charging excessive amounts and that all they seem to care about is the money and they sort of have to keep saying to you, I have to keep coming back for you know, more money, fuck it out kind of thing, that's when you're like, nah, nah. So not definitely do your homework, do your research. And a lot of times I believe these people, they, they want to keep it somewhat low-key. I, I doubt that they would advertise themselves or go on a nationally syndicated talk show you know so that's just what I believe I could be wrong but you know just please do your do your checking and all of that um, another thing too when it comes to different types of spirits what a lot of people try to do to communicate when they get desperate enough is they'll use spirit boards a Ouija board in particular which Miss Rose might know something about. Okay, so Melvin has told me time and time again, never, ever use an Ouija board, whether it's a, uh, a mate, one that you've purchased or one that you've created yourself, never use an Ouija board because um, that is what opens up portals uh, for spirits to come through and sometimes not so nice ones come through and demonic spirits can come through on the Ouija boards just to point that out there um, and sometimes if you don't know what you're doing you, you might actually trap them in this realm and they'll be stuck with you and you won't be able to send them back to where they came from so it is very important that if you're going to use an Ouija board that you know how to do it properly but it's not recommended that you do it at all do not use an Ouija board at all yeah um, unless you're extremely knowledgeable when it comes to that type of stuff just don't use it. I know I sound like aunt aunt Sue like don't do that no 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 but it, honestly <laughs> and then the ones that you make they're even worse than the ones that you purchase and the reason for that is because you're putting your own personal energy into it and so you're when, attracting something to yourself exactly and a Ouija board a lot of people get this mixed up a Ouija board is not evil it's an inanimate object it's not alive it can't be evil it has no feeling it can, it's nothing it's like a telephone you just but the problem is you're blindly calling numbers even though you want a specific person you ain't gonna get that person. Yeah, it's no telling if you're gonna get them. I mean, usually they have to be around you to come through. And so when you just start dialing in numbers, who knows who's gonna pick up another line? And that's uh, where a lot of people make their mistakes and they, they get things that happen to them. I mean, usually it's only for a few days, but, and it's never anything too crazy, but then there are cases where it is, and it's like, oh man, I messed up. I'll um, tell you about when I was a teenager, um, I actually mucked around with the Ouija board a couple of times. Um, so when I was a teenager, I had a group of girlfriends that we, we were like, you know, doing the whole being a rebel, um, being the whole gothic scene we wanted to mess around with stuff so we were experimenting using the Ouija boards and we did get some spirits come through that spoke to us but a lot of the times they they they're very really, they're really tricksters so that um, just because they're talking to you and they're telling you stuff doesn't mean that what they're saying is the truth so a lot of the times um, they would lie or just be tricksters and say stuff that's not true 
So I didn't actually, thank God, um, when I was a teenager and I was messing around with that stuff, I didn't have anything too negative come through, um, which I'm lucky because most of these Ouija boards we use were handmade ones. We made them ourselves. Because here in Australia, we don't have access to a Ouija boards because that's not really something that is uh, popular over here. Um, plus it's dangerous. If you go into a store and they're selling Ouija boards as a board game for your children, that is so unsafe and you should be very cautious of that. Um, but anyway, going back to my story, um, yeah, we, we had a few spirits come through. We spoke to them. Um, I did find out that they were kind of, yeah, just basically just saying whatever they wanted to get the attention. Um, I had a few things move, like they would move stuff around in my bedroom, um, they'd open cupboards, um, all sorts of things. Um, but yeah, thank God that they, they didn't attach themselves to me, they uh, they pretty much came and went. Um, I'm not sure if that's got to do with my guardian angels, which we do need to talk about spirit guides, that could be for another session, depending no, on if you want to... we can get into it a little, a little okay. later. Okay, well, we'll do that a bit later. Um, but yeah, I could have been protected, I don't know, as to why they didn't attach themselves to me. Um, but yeah, I, I thought back then that, you know, it's just, I didn't think anything of it. I didn't think that they'd be dangerous. Um, but after watching things uh, that happen to people on YouTube and all that kind of thing, you got to take into account some of them might be fake, but there are a lot of YouTube videos out there that show people doing Ouija board sessions, and some of it's pretty freaky. Um, like there was one uh, video that I watched recently, um, I'm not sure if you guys have heard of the Zozo Demon, I'm going to start getting into him now, uh, Melvin's just rolling his eyes at me. <laughs> Um, so there was a video I watched recently where there's a couple of people doing a session um, and they're deliberately trying to make contact with this thing, which I do not do not recommend at all. And this, this girl that was doing the session, she started laughing continuously out of control and started having it like a seizure almost. She was like extremely, uh, extremely um, possessed is the word I'm trying to look for. Um, that demon pretty much attached itself to her and just, you know, it's because they invited it along, you know, they were they were out to look for this demonic spirit and they, they got him, they got what they asked for. So I highly not recommend that people go looking for trouble because you're going to definitely get trouble and it's not going to be as nice as you think it's going to be. So, um, I recently, after Melvin's told me several times, do not use an Ouija board, and I, I know I know I shouldn't, but um, I thought that I was doing it safely. Um, I've, I've used pendulums before, so you know how you got your pendulum, you got your crystal, uh, and then you, you, it's like a pendulum board, it's very similar to an Ouija board, and you are putting your own energy into it. Um, that can be actually be quite unsafe as well, because um, I, I was using one one day to try and talk to my spirit dolls and um, the pendulum kept going Z O Z O and I knew instantly uh oh that's not good so I stopped using it straight away and I smudged the house and I cleansed everything and I made sure my dolls were safe and I'm just like get the hell away from me I don't want anything to do with you um, so uh, this entity is a, a spirit a spirit board manifesting entity um, because so many people out there deliberately go looking for him uh, he seems to pop up pretty much anywhere and everywhere so if you use an Ouija board chances are you're gonna have contact with him or one of his friends that aren't as nice as him uh, he's a bit of a trickster the other ones are a lot worse so um, we'll yeah, get into them it's, uh, it's the, let's see Zozo, Zaza and Mama which, you know, they're the trinity of the Ouija board for whatever reason. Uh, even though Zozo pops up the most, the other two, they will on occasion show up. Together. And, um, it, it's just weird because um, it, it's, Zozo's been documented for a while in a few different things. 
And what's interesting is, of course, those aren't their real names. A demon will not tell you its real name, or else you might you might get control over it. So, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. They'll lie. They'll pretend to be your friend. They'll do whatever it takes to get you vulnerable and to open up and and have whatever their goal is. They they're gonna succeed if you're not on your uh, toes anyway. Can I say his real name? Uh, Should I? Well, here's the thing: we don't know if that's his real name or not. You could say uh, it. People people have suggested that Zozo's real name is Pazuzu. And uh, Pazuzu is, what is he? I believe Pazuzu is a type of god, like an ancient god from, is it, it's one of the tribes, old ancient tribes from the west. Is it Mayan? No, it's not Mayan. I don't think it's Inca. Some sort of native tribe. What was it? Is it from the west? Is it? Oh, this is going to bug me. It's all but right. Anyway, he dates back to about 800 BC. Okay? Babylonian. He's Babylon, not Western. He's Babylonian. That's what it is. He's Babylonian, and he dates back to 800 BC. Okay? That's a long time. And also, fun fact, Pazuzu is the name of a demon in The Exorcist. Um, so whoever did The Exorcist, well they did their research <laughs> but uh, Pazuzu was supposed to be one of the kings of demons and he was like a king of the wind or something like that so it's believed that Zozo could possibly be this uh, particular demon alright so getting back to my story um, I stupidly used an Ouija board a couple of weeks ago um, I, I was getting desperate. I, I was having issues trying to communicate with my spirit dolls, and I, I just felt really um, upset that I wasn't getting through to them, and they weren't getting through to me. So I was just a little upset, and I wanted to just try and use the board. Hopefully, I'd get them come through so I could talk to them. Um, so I did what I thought was right by putting the board out, uh, making sure I smudged the house first to get rid of any negative energy. I was in a good mood. I had really good uh, intentions of communicating with my spirit dolls. I put some salt out. Um, so I basically covered the entire Ouija board with salt so that anything negative, if they did try to come through, they couldn't really get to me. So I protected myself. I asked for protection from my spirit guides. I did everything right. And as soon as something comes through, guess who's the first one to come through? Santa? No, not Santa. <laughs> um, it went to Z-O. And I'm like, the hell are you doing here? And it just kept going because there's two no's on the board. There was no in the alphabet and then the no down at the bottom. It just kept going, no, 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 no. And I thought he was just not answering my questions at first. Then I realized what he was doing. He was going, zo, 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 zo. He just keeps going back and forth, back and forth. And I'm just like, mate, you're seriously annoying me right now. I went, I got so defensive at first. I was so furious with him. And I know that he can feed off that anger. And I didn't really think. I was just so angry with him for getting in. I'm like, how the hell did you get in? I did everything right. How are you even here? So no matter what you do, he can still come. He can still come through to you. So I, I was quite angry. Um, he even tried moving the coin I was using past the salt barrier, and I'm like, no, 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 no. You are not moving that coin past that salt, buddy. You are staying where you are. You are going back to whatever hell you came from, and you are not going to touch me. <laughs> So I basically ruled out my, I basically like, nah, you're not touching me. You ain't going to get anywhere near me, buddy. So go away. <laughs> Leave me alone. So I, I was pretty upset and angry and I, I did what I did last time. I smudged the house again. I uh, cleared it away and made sure my dolls were safe. But yeah, um, if anyone 
hasn't really seen any videos based on this demon, uh, there is a Ghost Adventures episode of the Zozo Demon. Um, he can be a pretty sexual predator, and he seems to really like females. Um, you could you could call him a is a succubus. You could call him an incubus. An incubus. You could call him that if you want, because he is kind of a sexual predator. Um, he, he likes to target women and get them in a vulnerable position. Okay, so anyone who's listening to this and they're curious about Zozo and they just they want to mess around with the Ouija and they want to summon him, don't do it, please. I mean, if, you, if you do, do so at your own risk. And... Um, before you do, though, I recommend you uh, look up this uh, guy. His name is uh, Darren Evans, and he was the person on that Ghost Adventures episode you were talking about who was involved with Zozo. And I recommend everyone look him up, read about his story, try and get in contact with him because I. Uh, for Did his partner end up going to jail because she was trying to attack him? Yep, his wife went to jail. Uh, I think she's his ex now, but uh, she went uh, to jail, and it's possibly because of Zozo. See, they, they would deliberately mess around with the Ouija board, um, and they invited him in, and she was more obsessed with him than he was, so she was doing Ouija board sessions without him, and he didn't know this. Um, so Zozo was getting very, very attached to this woman, and... In the in the video with the ghost adventures, you actually sort of see you can actually see when she changes from her to the possessed kind of demonic entity around her. Um, so he was control like the Zozo demon was pretty much controlling her, um, and uh, yeah, basically turned her into a very violent person. And tried she tried attacking her partner, and yeah, she ended up going to jail because uh, now the. The attack on him and everything, that that's not on the episode, in case you no. guys are thinking that. That's something separate, but... Um, you can see where she's taken her belt off and stuff, but she's kind of lost him. She sort of has blackouts, so whatever the demonic was, spirit was doing to her, she sort of blacked out a bit, so you aren't fully in control. The, the, the spirit has more control over you, so that's why it's very unsafe that you guys mess around with stuff like that. It's yeah, it's not good at all. Uh, and I love the boys from Ghost Adventures, so I do have to put this out there um, for anyone who has not seen Ghost Adventures, and if you are very interested in the topic of spirits and um, all that, um, Ghost Adventures is a pretty genuine uh, show. They do everything to the truth, um, and they don't even, you know, they don't go, oh, that's definitely this and that's definitely that. They, they just like to do what we're doing, basically, is, you know, give out all the evidence of what they've seen, what they've filmed, and they let the viewers decide. And I really like those boys. Um, they're pretty genuine with what they do. So if anyone's interested in watching them, go for it. it, it it's something I'd definitely recommend for people that are interested in the topic. Uh, for those in the States, it, Ghost Adventures comes on Travel Channel Saturdays at 9 p.m. on Travel and Channel. For uh, those people... In Australia, I have no clue what channel it is. it's on on Foxtel. I've tried looking for it. I just YouTube it. It's on YouTube. They have all the episodes on YouTube. So um, I've pretty pretty much seen almost all of them. There's a few that I've missed, but yeah, I yes, just I, I, I do try to keep her up to date on the episodes. So I I actually have purchased some of the expensive equipment that they used to try and contact my spirit doll friends. So. Um, but I, I don't seem to have as much luck as they do. I don't think the spirits that I have at my home, I don't think they have enough energy. I think that's the reason why some spirits have trouble getting through is they really need that energy. That's why demonics are so dangerous because they feed off of your negative energy. That just makes them stronger. Yeah. The other thing, too, is, you know, even though they are passed on and we we don't really know what the spirits are and everything they're still their own individual person they still have their own personalities and such and sometimes you just don't want to be bothered it's like yeah you know so that could be a reason why they may not say hello you know they just having a lazy day 
All right, so the next type of spirit um, that I would really like to get into is spirit guides and guardian angels. Um, now, these are a little bit different to your everyday spirits. They're not earthbound spirits. Um, these guys can come in and out of our atmosphere whenever they need to. Um, so basically, a spirit guide is a spirit that is in your life from... They, they could be here for just a period of your life or they could be here from when you're born to when you die. So there's many different types of spirit guides that one person can have. It's not just the one. You can have numerous you know, amounts of spirit guides. So you can have as many as you need to in that lifetime, like your lifetime now. So you can have as many as you need to. You could have up to 100 if you needed, needed the 100. So um, basically they come to you when you need them. Uh, they try to help you with the with whatever issue that they're dealing with and then they'll leave once that once that's settled so I have to give you an example um, if I'm at a crossroads where I can go one direction or the other but I'm stuck and I don't know what to do I could have a spirit guide come through and maybe just try and push me in the right direction show me a sign you know give me a thought, something that can lead me in the right direction. So that that's basically their aim, is just to guide us in, in our lives to try and make the right decisions, um, try to push us forward, you know, help us with whatever we need help with. So um, I believe that I have Native American spirit guides because uh, I believe that I have a very strong connection with them and I possibly might have been a Native American when I was in another lifetime. So I, I feel very strong and loving towards my spirit guides because I just love the fact that I'm so in touch with the Native American sort of culture, even though I don't actually know. So I do feel like I have Native American spirit guides um, because you know, I believe I was Native American in a past life, so I feel like they're coming to me to guide me in this lifetime so that I can be where I need to be. Um, so a few things with spirit guides is they don't necessarily have to be human. Spirit guides can be anything from human sort of entity to uh, the angelic realm or the even extraterrestrial realm. Uh, a spirit guide normally takes on a form that either they feel com comfortable in or um, that you feel comfortable with. If, if you view them as some beautiful angel with wings, they'll, they, they, they can come to you like that depending on what the situation is. Um, so I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, so one of the books I was reading, um, they were talking about the 9-11 incident. Uh, what, what's the name of the book? Uh, I think this was The Human by Day, Zeta by Night. Um, so I, I'm a big fan of Judy Carroll and uh, Helene Kay, Kane. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, I have them on my Facebook page. Um, they're The Zeta Message. Um, so they're the books I've been reading recently. I, I've read a few other ET related books, but this is probably the first couple of books I've read that are very positive with the ET aspects um, and I believe that everything in the books the tr like they're basically giving out the truth I don't believe that they're being untruthful about anything um, but anyway so the book that that I was reading um, they're talking about the 9-11 incident and how some of the people uh, were trapped underneath stuff and there was no way that they were going to be found so the um, the angelic uh, angels, uh, they're more advanced, um, like they're at the top of the human ladder, which I know I've got to get into that. Um, I mean, I, I really want to talk about the human ladder because that's part of her book, and that's that's one thing that kind of made me realize things that I wasn't aware of as well. So I will get into that eventually. But let's say that they're at their last evolution. So the the angelic realm, the angels, they're right at the top of the list of your evolution. So they've already done what they needed to do in their life their lifetime. So they're basically here now just to help everyone else get to where they are. So they can come down uh, when people are in need of passing over. 
So when someone's leaving their physical body, um, they can come to that person in, a, in an angelic form. So if that person has set in their mind that angels are beautiful beings with halos and wings, they will just visualize themselves so that person feels comfortable, so that that person will go with them into the next um, lifetime. So the angelic beings come here to help us pass on. Uh, so that was their duty. Um, your your normal guides, your everyday guides, um, they can be your past lives. Now, I, I don't know 100% about all of this, uh, but your past life, like um, your past life spiritual being can actually be one of your spirit guides. Does that make sense? Truthfully? <laughs> It's it's something that I've never really looked at, but um, it's possible. Uh, but yeah, you, one of your past life experiences could be one of your gu guides, could be trying to guide you in the right direction. I mean, maybe it's all part of your your oneness, your um, uh, your whole consciousness. You know, oh, man, man. Your soul inside of you, you're just in a living tissue. You're just in a physical being. So your past lives are still there in the background, but you don't remember them because you're in a physical body on a physical earth. So, but yeah, that's, I guess that's another topic for another time because that's a little bit confusing to get into. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's interesting, though. Yeah. But that's, I guess that would explain some deja vu moments. Yeah, I, you know what? I get deja vu all the time. And I don't know if it's because I'm opening myself up with meditation and my and my energy. Like, maybe that's what's, what's like, making me remember things that haven't happened yet. That, that's just creepy, eh? Deja vu really creeps me out. It always has because I don't understand it. Now, if I don't understand it, I'm just like, why? Why is this happening? <laughs> what is happening um, actually, to my world? Actually, I have, I have a story about something like that that I need to tell you guys, but I'll, I'll leave that for another time. But um, now, do you ever right. do you ever get that feeling like you get a shiver that goes down your spine just randomly? Sometimes, yes. Um, you get goosebumps. You get cold. Well, uh, I believe that's a sign that your spirit guides are around. Okay. Um, and I do find it's funny because uh, you mentioned to me once before, Melvin, that spirits, spirit guides in particular, they can leave signs for you. Like, you can just randomly find money, and that is them saying hello. And now, at first, I didn't really believe that. So, uh, Melvin and I are having a talk, and he's, he mentioned that um, if I find money, that my spirit guides are saying hello. And that exact same afternoon that I spoke to him, I randomly had my hand in my pocket and I pulled out this money that I didn't even know was there. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> it just freaked me out because I'm just like pulling this money out of my pocket. I'm like, oh, so maybe maybe that is somewhat truthful that um, if I find random money that my spirit guides are saying hello. Mind so they must you. be saying, they Mind must say hello to me. Sorry. Oh uh, no! I just wanted to say it's it's nothing big, you know. It's not like five hundred dollars, anything like that. It's small little. No, it's like, it was like a five dollar note. Uh, but that converts actually, to maybe it's... about four bucks over here. <laughs> so Coin, coins are the most ones that pop up, not yeah. so much notes. A lot of coins like, will if, pop if up. If you find money, it's not just luck. It's like, hey, spirit guides are saying hello. Um, but they must be saying hello to me every time I do the laundry because I tend to find coins in my washing machine a lot. Well, that but could that's, be that's due to someone that lives with me who doesn't clean out their pockets when they put their clothes in the wash. Okay. <laughs> but hey, I'm the one finding the money and I'm like, squeaky clean coin, it's been cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice and shiny. Oh, funny. Um, but yeah, uh... What I was basically trying to say is your spirit guides don't necessarily uh, have to be human looking. They can look like, normally they choose what they want to look like. They normally go, this is what I look like in a past life. I'm going to keep that look for my spiritual guide look. Yeah, but so. that doesn't mean that they won't adapt to look like something different to help you out. Yeah, yeah definitely, that they can do that. Um, 
a lot of times too when your spirit guide or something's around you'll hear faint like a faint voice it almost sounds like it's yelling but it's never yelling it's 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 a yell but it's not a yell it's always sounds Actually, like it's far away on that topic um sometimes when i go to bed at night when i'm trying to sort of get into my stage of falling asleep i can hear voices in my head and i believe it's my spirit guides trying to talk to me and it feels like they're yelling because they're they're in a realm where they're trying to communicate with you but you can't hear them so they're yelling to try and get your attention so they're coming through as if they're yelling at you half the time i can't even work out what they're saying or i don't remember but it's very interesting because I'm just I'll be trying to go to sleep and this this random person just yelling a random word at me going you know sometimes they yell my name or sometimes they just yell something random at me well as and long I'm just as like, they're not telling you to burn stuff down it's all good <laughs> no, they're not doing that at all I couldn't resist I'm sorry in all seriousness in all seriousness though um, usually uh, what they say is when you're falling asleep and everything you're 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 opening yourself up to that yeah realm. you open yourself up you're more relaxed you're at peace and it's like just everything just flows correctly and you leave your physical body and you're you're somewhat going to another realm but not entirely you're um you're like stuck in between and then sometimes you wake up too fast or whatever like they say that that's when it feels like you're falling and you sometimes land on the bed and it feels like you just drop from like five feet on the bed like a sack of potatoes just, Ooh! that's happened to me several times it sucks not saying that i was like floating above my body like in ghostbusters or nothing but but I have at random times just woken up and felt like I just dropped hard on the bed. I've uh, actually woken up to the whole bed, the, sorry, the whole bed vibrating. Yeah. Like I've woken up because the entire bed was shaking. Like it was shaking crazy. And I've woken up and I'm going, what the hell's going on? And as soon as I woke up, it stopped. But yeah, that was that was a really scary moment when I when I had that experience because I had no idea if it was related to ETs or just the the stage of whatever sleep I was in. The whole bed was shaking and I've just woken up and I'm like, it's vibrating. What the hell's going on? So yeah. Well, something was wrong there. Um, I, well, okay, look at it this way. You got a free massage. I did. I had a free uh, bed massage, and my partner was sound asleep and didn't fucking sorry, didn't hear a thing, didn't didn't feel a thing, and I thought that was really weird. Since he's a light sleeper and he wakes up to almost anything. Okay, so. So I thought that was weird. <laughs> the other thing, um, with the spirit guides, that I personally believe, okay, they're they will save your butt like when you need them they honestly will show up and save your butt and they will intervene by unconventional means for instance i remember one time when i was little uh and i grew up in compton and if you're in the states you at least on the west coast compton california you know about it it's not good <laughs> straight out of compton and uh, I, I was, um, I was with my uncle, and it's a little street corner which I'll take a picture of one day. And like, I was with my uncle, and I remember hearing a faint voice call my name. I thought it was my mom. It sounded like my mom almost. It was just oh, man. you know, it, it was just very weird. And I turned around and I walked like just a few inches back behind this street, the street sign, the street post, and a drive-by happened. And uh, guys shot the guns and everything. It was so fast at the time. I didn't know what was happening. My uncle knew. And right where I stood, the sign, it was a bullet that was lodged in. 
and it would have hit me if it weren't for that sign and where I was initially a bullet zoomed by and it would have hit me if I was just a few inches in front and uh, my uncle you know he panicked and he got me out of there and stuff but you know it's one of those things I haven't forgotten because I, I remember that voice and it honestly saved my butt my mom she was nowhere near anywhere near there and you know I think that bullet might actually still be in that sign if so I will take a picture of it but yeah you know kind of trippy so in um, saying, saying that Melvin I had a similar experience when I was a kid as well um, I was in the backyard uh, I don't even know what I was doing in the backyard actually I was just walking around being a kid and something actually told me to stand still like, I just had that feeling I had to stand still. And then I looked down at the ground, and there's this bloody brown snake, like, not even, like, half a meter away from me. It was slithering right next to my foot. And for those who don't know what a brown snake is, they are the second most deadliest snake in the entire world. Um, they're very, very popular around here in Australia. Um, they're a very common snake. Um, but anyway, th there's a snake right, right next to my foot slithering along and I didn't even know it was there. And I just had that feeling that I had to stand still. Um, because obviously if you stand still, the snake's not really going to see you. So it's just going to keep doing what it's doing. He, the snake had no idea I was there. And I didn't know until I looked down at the ground. I'm like, oh, there's a snake there. And I just waited for him to sort of get a good distance away from me so I could run and tell my mom and go, Mom, there's a snake in the backyard. <laughs> and then they couldn't find it. They tried finding it and they, it was gone. It had gone under the fence, I think. But anyway, um, that moment, I'm thinking, well, it could have been my spirit guides. could have been my ET guides. I actually don't know to this day who told me to stop, but someone told me to stop. Because I had that feeling I had to stop. I had to look at the ground because I actually had my ears sort of, you know, I sort of stopped and my ears just like, hang on, I can hear something moving. Like, no one listens to the grass moving, right? <laughs> So I, I've sort of something's told me to stop, and I could hear a noise like the grass moving. So that's when I looked down and saw the snake. So it's like something was telling me that hey, you need to pay attention because something's happening right here. You know, if I would have got bitten, um, and I was only very little, um, it could have been a life or death situation. Yeah. Wow. So I'm pretty happy. Whoever saved me, I'm someone. Someone out there is looking out for me. So. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay, so now, um, guardian angels, uh, I'll be the first to admit, I'm not a big believer in guardian angels. I believe that's something, it's more to do with religious stuff that was created to just kind of keep you, uh, keep you less afraid and like something is watching over you as you go on your merry way and kind of keep you in ignorance and something that was created to fight demons you know because as far as i know angels fight demons demons fight angels angels always win because they're good and they're light you know so i'm, I'm iffy with guardian angels and uh, so, so melvin just want to stop you there do you have a little um good angel and bad bad devil on your shoulders right now all the time baby so you got like a little devil telling you to do naughty things and then you got an angel going, no, don't do that. It's wrong. Of course. <laughs> Unfortunately, the angel always wins out. That's funny. So which one wins out for you? Oh, uh, gee, well, you know, I have a dark side. Uh-oh. I have, I have a dark side, but I'm mostly a good girl. So I guess the... I reckon I'm a bit of a mix between the good and the evil. I reckon I'm a bit of an outgoing, crazy person, but I'm not going to do anything like that's really bad. <laughs> okay. So you I, say. I'm, I'm a naughty good angel. <laughs> a naughty good angel. That's a nice way of putting it. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, with, with the uh, angels, I'm just, 
I somewhat think it's just something that was created to keep people at ease and let them know that, oh, yeah, there's some good in the world, and they're fighting these guys. So you want to stay on this side, and you'll always be protected, as opposed to this side where you'll get stabbed and bludgeoned to death. You know, but again, that's just me. And, you know, it's all right. Everyone has an opinion on the on the matter, so. And opinions is what make the world go round. But they all smell like butt, so that's a problem. Um, actually, it would be good to get some viewers um, comment on whether they've seen a, a spirit or an angel or a spirit guide. Um, I would like to know what they've seen and what they've experienced. I'd be really interested in that. Yeah, so you could either say it here on YouTube in the comments, uh, comments, or you can go to, uh, oh, what's our Facebook? www.facebook slash unexplained possibilities. Tongue twister. Ah. Um... If you don't mind, Melvin, I'd like to uh, tell the viewers about a couple of little encounters that I've had with spirits. Yeah, go ahead. I haven't had many. Like I've said, I had that Ouija board experience as a kid, but um, I have seen a like an earthbound spirit once, felt one. Okay, I'm going to just go... The first time I felt a spirit was when I was walking past a cemetery and I felt really, really cold as if I walked into a ghost, literally. So I've walked in, yeah, I've just been walking and then all of a sudden it got cold and I, I literally felt like I walked through something. So that was my first feeling experience when I felt a spirit around me. Um, the next one, I was about 17, and this is going to go back to my ex-boyfriend. Seems to be everything was happening with my ex-boyfriend. Uh-oh. Um, his father died of cancer, and I went to his funeral, and I'd never been to a funeral in my life, so I started bawling my eyes out because they were playing sad music, which made me cry. I was so annoyed that they were playing sad music, so I didn't want to cry, but I did. And I was bawling my eyes out, and I, and I was right at the back row of the room, and I looked up on the stage, and I saw his father standing there, smiling at me, and it was a very uh, um, blurry kind of image, it wasn't clear, but I saw him, I saw his face, and he was just smiling at me, and I stopped crying, and I smiled back at him, and then he vanished, and I'm just like... Wow. To this day, I've never really told anyone because I, he, my, my ex at the time is not a believer of anything like that because they're very highly Catholic, so I didn't want to mention it. But, um, yeah, I, that was the first time I'd actually seen a spirit. Like, I was, like, kind of... It's like I knew, like, as soon as I looked up and I saw him and he was smiling at me, I just smiled back, and it's like I, I was really comfortable. I was like, okay... And then I sort of realized afterwards what I'd seen. I'm like, hang on a second. I think I just saw a ghost. <laughs> so that was quite interesting because I wasn't expecting it. And I guess he was just trying to tell me to stop being upset, you know. But it, it was really interesting that he was just standing there on the stage and no one else saw him. And I was the only one who saw him. And I'm just like, oh, okay, thanks. I, I feel really comfortable now because that, that, that made me feel a lot better. Wow. Um, and I think the only other experience I had with spirits in general is I don't know if I told you about this Melvin I think I did I was in my room and I was trying to open myself up to my spirit guides as I've been doing for the past few months um, and I saw an image that looked very ET like um, but it was very hard to make out so I, I saw like a face it looked like an ET looking face and it was not very clear at all but I'm pretty sure that was one of my spirit guides but yeah I, I, I just saw something there and I got that feeling that something was watching me so it was a very unusual experience because I didn't couldn't work out what it was that I was looking at um, it was only like a split-second thing 
I just saw and it saw someone's face and then it would vanish and um and it looked like an ET but it didn't feel like a one that I'm dealing with now. It just it, oh, it, I think so it just, different uh, energies. Yeah, I believe it was a spirit guide of some sort. Like, hmm, it was very interesting though. Because he, he looked a lot he looked a lot taller than the ones that I, that I believe are dealing with me. Okay. Uh, he looked a lot taller and a lot wiser, like a like yeah, he's a lot more advanced. Okay. Well, um, do you still get that feeling though from time to time or no? Um, not as much as I used to. Like uh, I used to get a lot of experiences with that sort of thing, but at the moment I've had a bit of a dry spell. But they're probably just busy, you know. Yeah, just kicking it. You know, they've got things they got to do. I mean, look at this planet at the moment. <laughs> I mean, come, come on. They've got other things to do other than muck around with me. I mean, they're trying to stop us from killing each other, and we're at war over this crazy religion people that want to kill us all. Okay, so now uh, spirit guides, angels... Same thing or different? Uh, I believe they're different. But I think I think the angels are from an uh, an angelic realm, and the spirit guides are from the spiritual realm. Which uh, they're here to guide us every day. And the angels, I think, only come to us when we need them, um, like when we need to pass over, or <laughs> you know what I mean. Sorry. No, that's okay. Okay, so it. It seems as though, oh yeah, so so people can know, um, humans don't become angels. You know, a lot of times it's like, oh, it's a human, they're going to be angels. I don't believe we become angels. I believe we're humans and humans are humans. We, yeah, so fortunately, sorry, we don't. We're, we're, phys we're physically humans, but once we evolve as a spirit, a spiritual being, eventually we might, we will probably go to the angelic realm so that we can help people like us at Perhaps. the moment. Yeah, so it, it's really a, something that you got to just experience for yourself, I guess. Yeah. No, no one really knows all the answers to that because we are only on a level one planet, which means we don't know absolutely everything about but it. But it is possible. You know, almost anything's possible. So, but I, uh, I do think there is a difference between spirit guides and angels, but sometimes spirit guides are portrayed as angels or guardian angels. And I do believe that there is some type of interference from somebody because I, I do think back to that day that um, it almost happened to me like I told you a few minutes ago and other people that had unexplained things happen to them that saved their life I mean you know maybe it's just the human will wanting something so badly you just overcome it or or I, I don't know <laughs> it could be a lot of things but um, I do believe it is something out there that guides us or it, or attempts to guide us in the end we still have the choice of doing whatever it is we want to do but they do try to guide us to make the right choice which a lot of us don't unfortunately okay um oh yes <laughs> i do want to get back to the demon thing real quick though um yeah so sorry about that little bit of uh technical difficulties anyway yes yeah, so back to the demons real quick and uh want to talk a little bit more about the ouija demons the zozo the zaza the mama uh, whatever so, um, with them, quite possibly, it's actually not just one individual demon using that name. It could be many that use that name. And it's just yes. an alias that they go by. I mean, everyone knows it. It's simple. It's a powerful name as of now. You know, and like I said earlier in the show, demons will not tell you their real name. They 
they just will not because when you know someone's name you have control over them and that that is true in so many ways I mean look at look at it like this I mean identity theft if you get someone's name and a little bit of their information who knows what you can do with it open credit cards I mean buy cars jack their cash so in a sense it's it's like um, it's like demons with their real names you'll have control over them which they will not like the other thing is that um, going back all the way to the beginning of the show when we were talking about the scratches the physical scratches that that can uh, get put on a person sometimes when they scratch you it's like a mock trinity if that makes yeah. sense so it's three it's scratches normally in race yeah. yeah and they're and they according to some people they feel like a burning sensation they don't necessarily feel like you got scratched but it burns and then the little marks show up uh, the other thing too is the bewitching hour which is uh, it's believed to be 3 a.m. And the reason yeah. why it's 3 a.m. is because it's believed that Jesus died on the cross. I'm going into, of course, Christianity belief right now. Jesus died on the cross at 3 p.m. And so to mock that, the bewitching hour is supposed to be at 3 a.m. when demons are most active and the veil is at its thinnest. And that means it's just a lot of spirits, very, very active. So if you find yourself waking up at 3 a.m., you might have a ghost in your house. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Now, what did you? Um, isn't one 1 a.m. meant to be a good, a good one? Uh, well, okay. So this is going into a little bit of numerology or angel numbers and stuff of that nature, but. Um, with one and things dealing with one 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 or whatever it's supposed to be angelic numbers and it's not that it's good it's kind of neutral but it's saying that the universe is open to listening to you and whatever your wish is wish it now it's a listening and you'll get it allegedly I've tried it hasn't happened yet but on that same coin it also says that you know you'll get it when you're ready so they whoever came up with this they added in a little bit of a fail safe in case they're wrong so yeah smart person mm -hmm. um, with uh, the demons uh, 3 a.m. yeah that's when they're at their most powerful that's when they're roaming around you'll hear noises things moving around cold spots very very trippy stuff uh, the other thing with demons too is it's a smell that's associated with them not just them with some spirits in general there there is a smell if they want you to know they're around sometimes uh, demons for whatever reason they they'll say they smell like sulfur which I find particularly interesting which um, in this case, I mean, it, they could be from another dimension, and it's just a lot of sulfuric uh, gases and everything over there. I don't know. And sometimes spirits, like if you knew them, they'll actually leave a scent in the air that's familiar with them, such as strawberries. You know, that's the other thing too with spirit guides. They'll leave a pleasant scent, so so you can know they're around or somebody's around someone's thinking about you you're in a good place and it's just to calm you down or or warn you that something is near um, so you know it's little things like that that I find interesting I hope you guys find it interesting Rose do you find it interesting yeah I do oh, I thought you were gonna say no I totally expect you to say, no, you're an idiot. No, you're an idiot. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but I think that's just about going to do it for us today. 
Yeah, I think we've discussed a, l a lot about the spirit topic, so... Okay, so any final statements? We've covered a lot. Um, well, I'm going to post my spirit dolls on our Facebook page so that people can have a look, and then I'm going to try and find my all my orb pictures that are decent <laughs> and try and put them on there as well. So if people are interested in looking at it, go for it. Okay. Um, so this show, it was, you know, about spirits and covered a decent amount, I believe. The next one, though, we have agreed will be on Rose. Voodoo. All right, Voodoo. Um, and that... Which is Melvin's expertise. Well, don't say it's my expertise. People expect too much. No, it is uh, not my expertise. Well, he knows a lot more about Voodoo than I do. But that's going to be very interesting because I'm going to try and break a few myths about it. And that's going to be a heavy hitter, as I like to call them. This one was more of a lightweight, but, you know, just yapping. Um, but with Voodoo, we're going we're gonna to talk about some interesting stuff. And if you're lucky, I might even tell you a few spells that you can try doing. Maybe. Yeah. Perhaps. It depends. So, with that said, remember, there are things that go bump in the night. Remember to say hi. Night, everybody. Later.